Hi, it's Trisha here at Club Scrap, and I can't wait to show you the Paradise Club stamp cards that we're gonna make this month. And um, I've made 10 cards, which is a fewer than normal, but I have some very special things to show you. So let's take a quick tour of those cards. One of the things about this, the stamps in this particular set is that they're outlined, and I had a lot of fun just taking a marker, actually used a Sharpie, and colored in the solid lines from the image here to finish this pretty basic card. And then uh, one of the goodies in the collection include these shell sequins. Now I found the best luck um, for attaching the shells was simply using one of our foam adhesive circles. Um, it seemed to work a little bit better than bookbinding glue because it created a nice uh, flat surface on the back of the shell. Um, here we have a really sweet one where I used a combination of our inks that match the papers including, I believe it was Lagoon, Peridot, Fuchsia, and Tangerine to stamp the guitars. And then this uh, black strip here provides a nice sturdy surface for tying it, this sweet green bow. And here we have, like, this was the kit of funky, uh, funky fibers. <laughs> and we have this really fun little, like, net style um, ribbon that I use. It actually wraps all the way around the card, and then the seam of the ribbon is hidden by the black strip underneath. Here we have another bit of the ribbon here with the uh, three stamps of the, um, the glass, and then outlined again with a Sharpie to match the colors in the kit. And uh, this one's kind of sweet with the three shells added, and again, a green wrapped ribbon around a black uh, anchoring strip here that holds it stable. And um, then the outlined pineapple. And then I have a set of four pop-up cards. So I'm going to show you today how to make this pop-up. Now you may have seen this. It's, they've been kind of popular online lately. And I, I watched and, tr and created my own card sample with the pop-up. And it was an extremely involved process. Now being known as the efficient crafter, I found a way to make this a very efficient and easy process. So once you get your kit and you download the trimming instructions, trim the papers accordingly, um, that will give you all of the pieces that you need to make these four pop-up cards and I'm simply going to show you the technique uh, behind it just to make one of them and you'll just repeat the steps for all four and you'll interchange the colors. Um, okay, so let's begin. We have our score pal. I'm using the new score pal that has the eighth inch uh, line scores every eighth inch, which I really, really love uh, the new feature here on this. If you don't have the upgraded eighth inch version, I highly recommend it. Um, and then we're going to take the four and a quarter by 11 inch piece and simply score it in half at five and a half. Now you can decide, because the paper is duplex, which side you want facing out. I guess I'm going to go with the lime to duplicate my original. So I want the lime side facing up when I make my score so that the divot of the score lines on the outside of the fold and the bump is on the inside. That's always the rule. Set that aside and I'm going to take the two and a quarter by 11 white strip that we also cut during the trimming process and score it horizontally at two and three quarters and eight and a quarter. Then I'm going to flip it and score at the middle because this will end up being an accordion fold and by flipping it then all of the, the scores are on the correct side of the paper. All right, I'll set the score pal aside and we'll fold this strip as long as we've got it handy. So even though I've scored it, I still will very carefully align the little edges there and make my center fold first. Now I've got the free edge here, which I'll then bring up to the quote unquote mountain, the mountain fold and burnish and then flip up the other free edge, bringing it up to the mountain fold. And now I have a little accordion that looks like the letter M for Morris. Yay. Okay, now we have our card base here. Bump of the score is right here. Um, helpful tip. Um, someone said that they learned it, that the because the bump of the score goes on the inside of the fold, they kind of um, remembered this, the bump, as being the worm. <laughs> I know it's kind of strange, but you, whenever you make a fold, you put the worm in the ground. So uh, maybe that's a handy way for you to remember. A lot of people get that wrong. All right, so the lime side of my beautiful duplex paper is on the outside. And then I have also my little mechanism. I have four little, I think they're two by two and a half inch uh, rectangles of varying colors. And then I have this four and a quarter by eight and a half inch strip. Now this is going to be, be what causes it to pop up. Um, and this was where I made a lot of abbreviations to the process that save us a ton of time. You need to have... Uh, grid ruler, one of Club Scraps awesome grid rulers. And I'm sorry for the glare we're getting here. I'll move it over a little bit so that you can't see that. Okay, so we're going to 
place our paper horizontally. Now this is four and a quarter by eight and a half. Then we're going to take the ruler and position that vertically. So this is horizontal, this is vertical. Now with the ruler, every line, whether it's dashed or solid, equates an eighth of an inch. So if I go all the way to this first, it's eight boxes over from the edge, that's one inch. Then I go eight more boxes from this edge, that's two inches, and then add one box. So right now my ruler is positioned exactly two and one eighth inches from the edge of my paper. Two and one eighth, that's the number you're looking for. Once you find that measurement, just hold that ruler down with your non-dominant hand, and I'm going to make a fold. So I will go up so that the edge of my paper now is aligned with the edge of the ruler. I make a crease, and then open it. Then I'm going to make another fold where I go down. So I'm bringing the edge of the paper, the top edge, now it is aligned with the edge of my ruler, and make a crease. What that gave me is a big X right in the middle of the paper. There was no pencil marking, no craft knifing, no nothing involved other than just placing the ruler two and one eighth inch from one edge and making those folds. Then I'm going to take this print and fold and put it print side down and then fold up so that I'm folding it in half. I would call this a hot dog fold because it's the long way versus the hamburger fold, which is the short way. That would be a hamburger fold, but we're making a hot dog fold. Now all of my indentations or my creases are naturally occurring in exactly the right direction. So I've got this X valley fold and I have a mountain fold across the center. Now this can be the tricky part, but I think you'll be fine. What we want to do is sort of create this type of action so that you're X is making a valley and then your mountains are kind of coming together. So bring those mountains together like that. And if I lay this down, it looks like a little house. <laughs> and I can burnish that and flip it over and burnish. Okay. So next I will bring in my card base. And if you haven't picked up one of these handy needle tip applicators, I highly recommend it. They come empty and you can fill and refill and refill with our awesome bookbinding glue. Um, and that's what I'm going to be using to finish off this card. So begin by opening the card and test or dry fitting your piece into the card so that the point is just adjacent with the crease up at the top here. That's where it's going to live. And if you made nice, accurate folds, nothing will peek out over the either side. If necessary, before adhering, you may want to shave off a little bit of excess if you happen to have some. Now, I don't recommend putting it right up onto the crease because then it won't open and close freely. Just make sure you test drive it and that it opens and closes. And then this is really easy. For glue placement, we're just going to add our bookbinding glue to this area. Now, you can use other types of adhesive. I don't recommend an easy runner for this. I found that it's just not strong enough. Okay, so now I have adhesive placed on my triangular area and I'll just close the card and burnish it into place. Then flip the whole thing over and open it and repeat. So just a little bookbinding glue application here. Pretty thorough, getting to the edges. You don't want to over apply here because you don't want glue oozing out and then causing the card to, you know, then you, you just made a postcard. <laughs> um, you want to be able to open it. I'll burnish this again. And then now I have a great mechanism that only took less than half a sheet of paper. Now, the next thing we need to do is attach this M-shaped uh, accordion folded piece. And this can be the tricky part. Um, it's not too bad, but just follow along carefully. So if I place my M, you see the M right here, so that the free edges are facing the bottom of the card. And you can do this in the center, and I like to just go a little ways away from the very bottom edge. If you want, you can use the zero center of your ruler to find the center of the card. Um, I eyeballed mine, to be honest with you. I know that's unusual for me, but I did, I just eyeballed it. Now the thing is, a temptation might be to stick it right where it is, but that's not the case. When this pop-up mechanism closes, what we really want is adhesive in the top left corner of, the of this M-shaped mechanism so that the flap of this piece of paper right here sticks to that, just the one. So I will take my handy 
needle tip applicator and apply adhesive just to that one little area. And if you want, you can kind of um, even maybe take a pencil and just make a slight mark where the edge of this paper meets the card, meets the mechanism. And now I have glue all the way there and just close the card over that. This next step on camera might even be a little bit more difficult to show, but we need to repeat the process on the other side. So right now, this piece, this mechanism is connected to the flap on this side of the card. So let's flip the whole works over and I'm going to tuck the mechanism beneath the flap on the other side so it looks just like it did when we attached it the first time. And once again, I need to apply adhesive within the area that meets up with that flap. Okay, so then I'll take my, I just made a pencil mark all the way around there. I have my outlined area where I applied adhesive. I just stick it down on there, burnish. And now I have a fully functional pop-up Again, only using less than a half a sheet of paper for the mechanism. And then the way I created the, the cutting diagram for this in the instructions is from one sheet of paper, you'll get your card base, you'll get this pop-up mechanism, and also the four mats that you need. So what you can do at this point is stamp and decorate the little mat, and you can alternate colors if you want, and then all of four of these pieces will nest perfectly onto my pop-up. So let's take one more quick look at the finished version of this card. I'll set aside my, my sample here. Um, I used a remnant of the, the print that was not used when we made this, this piece and I uh, used it as an anchoring strip for, this, for the outside of the card. And then when you lift it and open, you can see how I stamped each individual panel with the different background image. Here I had the flowers in the background and then, a, and then a sentiment from the jumbo unmounted sheet that comes with the club stamp kit. And then I attached them to that before I attached the mechanism to the card. So you might want to just have this completely decorated before you make that last step of adhering. All right, so I hope that makes a lot of sense to you. Um, certainly a, a video is worth more than a thousand words <laughs> on paper. So um, I think this, this will really come together beautifully for you. And um, I hope you have a wonderful and relaxing time putting these paradise cards together. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.